you know, ha- the the worst harmful effects that that are coming of producing surgical smoke. Yeah, you became well versed in that. You know, uh, we've done research since early 1985 when NIOSH did some of the initial sur- studies on surgical smoke, and nothing's really can't change. We can research and research, and I mean, we have up to date research 2020 and 21. Mm-hmm. You you're not smoking filtered processed tobacco, and this is not a judgment call on cigarette smokers, but you are processed filtered tobacco and what we are smoking is the byproducts of human body parts no matter mm-hmm. whether it's a hernia repair or whatever the constituents of of the carcinogens are more mutant genetic than what you get in a cigarette smoke now not even ca- talking about mm-hmm. the transference of viruses and bloodborne pathogens and other particulates um you have a hundred over 140 150 different chemicals depending on the type of case we're doing and those chemical levels mm-hmm. are things like formaldehyde benzene and those are the carcinogens, um, not including the high risk of the viruses and the bacteria. You have so many different um, sizes of particulates, but yeah. the heat generation, unlike a cigarette, vaporizes small, small particulates. And the mm-hmm. farther, the smaller the particulate, the further the, that that smoke will travel or aerosol in the room. So they are as small as 0.1 microns. Uh, right. What does that mean? That's that particular is small enough to get in the alveoli of your lungs. Yeah. And, the, and the transference is very, very similar to that of c- cigarette smoke. It goes to all parts of the body. Yeah. I want to pull some because I definitely don't want to quote, misquote it. And it just, even in my own lectures, it surprises me of, of some of the um, impact of that surgical smoke. Yeah. And I, I wanted to pull that research up. I should have had it ready. I was reading, I mean, it passes through not only the alveoli, but the placenta. I mean, yes, the lymphatic barrier, just, I mean, so you are exposed to, your whole body is exposed when you're, when you're absolutely in the room. And they tell, what do they tell a, a you know, a, a female that's pregnant is don't smoke cigarettes. So I'll right. give you an example of the particulates and how much gets inhaled. And we're talking about maybe one surgical case. Remember, we're in there five to seven days a week, all day long. They, right. They're in there, do the case, and they leave. There is what we call particulate counts. And remember I said these particulates mm-hmm. can be large dust as small as 0.1 microns that go mm-hmm. deep into your lungs. Mm-hmm. A count on a standard incisional hernia repair, most of us know what that is if you're in healthcare, has mm-hmm. 292,000 per cubic centimeter for an incisional hernia repair of particulates. And that is not isolated to those individuals at the surgical field, but it right. aerosols and can travel throughout the entire operating room, even into the air vents uh, that can go into the hall uh, of the OR suite. A liver resection mm-hmm. has 490,000 cubic uh, centimeters of, of particulates. And then the average tidal volume, when we breathe in, is 500 cc's uh, during an incisional hernia repair, which means the surgical field or the individuals in the surgical fields breathes in, you're going to die. 146 (laughs) million particles per breath, and 70% of those are less than the 0.3 micron size. So, So not only do you have all the same effects that cigarette smoke has, only one gram of tissue vaporized by um, a, 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 a CO2 laser, or which is a common instrument we use, is equivalent to smoking three unfiltered cigarettes, not including the bloods and the viruses and everything else that are trans, transmitted through there. But one gram of tissue by the device we use in 98% of our procedures, the electrosurgical unit or cartery Mm -hmm. is equivalent to smoking six unfiltered cigarettes. So we're talking a gram, which if I did this, is probably that big and we're breathing it all day. And I think what's happened with us in healthcare, remember bloodborne pathogens. 
I, I don't mm-hmm. know if it, I can remember 25 years ago, nobody thought anything about getting splashed with blood. That was your badge of honor as a surgical nurse. You got to come out with blood on your outfit yeah. here. And now we're PPE and all the mm-hmm. COVID and SARS and tuberculosis and how important PPE is in every area we work in nursing. And then ergonomics came with patients of size and nurses and, and mm-hmm. surgical techs and everybody was pulling out their backs and we got mm-hmm. hover mats and all this stuff for transporting patients from bed to stretcher and vice versa. But why are we taking so long to put in safety devices? And then uh, patients, uh, not patients, staff was coming down with nonspecific lymphoma and leukemia Mm -hmm. due to not having scavenger systems on the anesthesia machines because the constant exposure to the anesthesia gases. And lo and behold, DNV and Joint Commission now says you will have scavenger devices on there Mm -hmm. to protect the staff. Uh, because this is exposure is really not good to see those anesthetic gases all coming yeah. and smelling it. I can even remember almost falling asleep in my earlier years as a nurse because it was no scavenger. It was like everybody has to be on their game when yeah, you do surgery, yeah. let alone what is yeah. a scavenger device specifically? It's- it's on the anesthesia machine, and we have all types of anesthetic gases that put patients to sleep, and it keeps the leakage at a minimum exposure to the staff that are always in that room. Okay. So we implemented all these safety devices, and here we've been using surgical uh, devices to vaporize tissue with uh, Dr. Bovey and Dr. Cushing ye- for years, and we or like the other protective equipment, we didn't think anything of it. And now it's all mm-hmm. coming to fruition that through research, we found out how yeah. bad it is for us to smell it and be exposed. 